as I was going through my notes, um, the quotes from Derrick James, <laughs> from Derrick James' interview on Dante's Boxing Nation, where he talked about why Kell Brook was, in quotes, the special one. Okay. While I read through the quotes that I typed up from Derrick James, I looked at it, I sat back, and I asked myself a question. I asked, what is this guy's background? You know, I want to find out more about this guy. Who is this guy? Uh, you know, before, I'd say maybe two, three weeks ago, he did an, another interview on Dante's Boxing Nation that I heard. Uh, and then I saw him at the press conference, okay? Those were the first times I had ever seen or heard of a Derrick James, okay? I, I know LeBron James, but I don't, I don't know Derrick James, okay? So, after going through my notes here, I asked myself, who is Derrick James? You know, what is his place in the sport? What is his history? Uh, who... You know, who else has he uh, trained? Because I, I did not know this guy. I had never, never seen or heard this guy before, okay? So what did I do? I went to the ultimate tool for boxing research, Box Rec. And I typed in Derrick James. Okay? Now, I was hoping to pull up a a record of, you know, maybe him as, as a trainer, you know, but the box trick, unfortunately, they do not have, uh, records of trainers, I believe. Okay. Uh, I wish they did. I wish you could type a trainer's name in and every guy that he has trained pops up and their records and fights. That would be pretty cool. Okay. But I, I won't criticize them because hell, they have a very extensive, uh, database as it is. Okay. So, you know, kudos to box trick, a great site. Okay. So, I type in the name Derrick James, and what pops up? A list of fighters. And at the top of that list was a super middleweight who fought from 1992-2008, who fought out of Dallas, Texas, okay? So, I'm like, wait a minute. Is this him? Could this be him? The Derrick James? So I click on it to see if his picture is there, okay? And unfortunately, there was no picture, okay? But I had to find out if it was him, okay? I was leaning toward it being him, you know? So I do a Google search, okay? Type in Derrick James, Boxer, Dallas, Texas, whatever I typed in, okay? And I found a forum, Okay? Uh, a form on a site called saddleboxing.com. Okay. Uh, it, it, it has a picture of Derrick James. Okay. The picture that I'm going to use as a thumbnail for this video. Okay. And, um, somebody posted in this form, um, a, a quote and a link to something that he said to fighthype.com from a few years ago talking about the Mayweather Pacquiao fight, okay? Before that fight, okay? This was a quote from Derrick James, okay? I'm tired of everybody talking about how Floyd Mayweather is afraid of this guy. I trained with Floyd years ago, and, and I fought at 168, and he was fighting at 130. Okay, that's all I needed to see. I was fighting at 168. Okay, so I easily assume that this is the same Derrick James, okay? All right, and I, I went to that that fight hype link, and it, it has the same uh, the same picture and the same quote. Okay. All right, so I said this is this guy. This is the Derry James. Okay, and I go to his box rick. All right. And to give you an overview of Derrick James' career as a fighter, okay? Like I said, the guy was pro from 92 to 2008. He fought at super middleweight for the most part in his career. That's what he's listed as on Box Rec. 
The guy's record was 21 wins with 12 KOs, 7 losses. He was knocked out 4 times. He has 1 draw and 1 no contest. Okay. So that's 30 uh, pro fights. All right. Now, Derek James has been critical of Kel Brooks' record, who he fought, etc., etc. And I'm glad this bit of information is out there so I can see who he fought and if he has a uh, room to talk, okay? And in my opinion, uh, he should be bound down to Kel Brook, okay? <laughs> he he has no reason to criticize Kel Brook whatsoever, okay? Now, my overview of uh, Derrick James' career, uh, you know, if I had his mentality, that he his hard ass, hard line mentality that he is using towards Kel Brook with the, with the Triple G fight, talking about a consolation prize, uh, you weren't good enough, you lost, uh, let's not give him a pat on the back, all this and that. If I had a, a hard line stance with this guy's career, okay, from what I have seen on his box trick, I would say that this guy's career was a bust, that he was a failure, okay? The only good thing I can say is the guy has more wins than losses, okay? He had 21 wins, 7 losses, okay? So at least he can pat himself on the back and say that. Plus he fought for 16 years, okay? That's good enough, okay? That's 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 something that you can be proud of, okay? But the fact of the matter is, this guy had three title fights in his career, okay? And not major title fights, uh, title fights for minor belts, you know, um, you know, not major world titles, but you know, minor sanctioning bodies, what I like to call underling belts, okay? All right, and he went 0 and three. In those fights, okay, which I will talk about here in a few minutes, okay. So, in the biggest fights of his career, he went 0 and 3, okay. He had three title fights, one of them was for two belts, and that was at the end of his career, okay. Now, let's start at the beginning, okay. He debuted on September 29, 1992, okay. I believe he was 20 years old, yes. He was born in 72, January 72, debuted in September of 92, okay? So he was 20 years old, okay? Now, this guy criticizes Kell Brooks' record, right? Who he fought, okay? Now, let me give you, he won his first nine fights, okay? Let me give you the record of the uh, the nine guys uh, that he fought, by the way, if you want to pull this up and look at it yourself as, as I go through this, you can go to BoxRec and in the search box, just type in the number 6506 and it will pop right up. His name will pop right up. Okay, or you can type in Derrick James and he will be at the top of the uh, page, super middleweight out of D Dallas, Texas. Okay, now his first nine fights, he went 9-0, and okay? These were the records of the guys that he fought, okay? The guy who was talking shit about Kell Brook's record, okay? First guy, 3 and 11. Next guy, 6 and 4. Third guy, 6 and 0. Oh. Then 3 and 1, 9 and 5, 3 and 3, 8 and 12, 6 and 1, 5 and 5, okay? So, not big time world beaters, okay? He did Fight a guy that was six and zero oh in his uh third fight, okay, uh, but he started out with a three and eleven guy, okay, and then in the seventh fight he fought an eight and twelve guy, okay, his ninth fight he fought a guy who was five and five, okay. Now, at this point, let me stop and go to some uh numbers that I did, okay, all right, he had nine fights in seventeen months to begin his career, okay. The record of those guys, okay, was 49 and 42, 91 fights. So his opponents had a record of uh, a 54% winning percentage, okay? He had four stoppages and five decisions uh, in, in those fights, okay? As opposed to Kell Brook, okay? Kell Brook debuted at 18, so he was two years younger than Derrick James, okay? Uh, he had nine fights in 12 months to begin his career, okay? So 
Um, you know, he fought uh, nine fights in the shortest uh, amount of time in Derrick James, okay? 12 months as opposed to 17 months, okay? The record of Kell Brooks' opponents was 110 and 624, okay? For a total of 734 fights, okay? So, in uh, Kell Brooks' first nine fights, okay, he had gotten in the ring with guys who had amounted up to having uh, 734 fights, uh, worth of, of of experience, okay, in their career, okay, seven hundred thirty four fights, in uh in in his first nine fights, that's what Kill Brook faced, okay. His his opponents had a uh a winning percentage of fifteen percent, okay, with the one ten six twenty four record, okay, as opposed to the fifty four percent winning percentage from Derrick James. So you would say, well, hey, Derrick James started out better, okay, okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to that in, in a minute, okay. All right, and like Derrick James, Kill had four stoppages and five decisions. Okay. Now, let's go back to Mr. Derrick James' resume. Okay. Now, in his tenth fight, okay, he had what was probably the biggest win of his career. Okay, in his tenth fight, now, in 1994. Uh, so the guy was almost a pro for two years. Not quite two. Almost it was like three three months shy of being a pro for uh, two years, okay? 1994, he fought a guy named Ulysses Bowler, okay? Both of them weighed in at 160 and a half pounds, okay? This guy, Ulysses Bowler, was 24 and 3, okay? Uh, Derrick James was 9 and 0. He was fighting a guy who was 24 and 3, okay? Derrick James TKO'd this guy in the second round, in a 10-round fight, Okay? Like I said, this was probably the biggest and best win of his career, okay? In his 10th fight, uh, you know, as to see he was, what, 22 years old at this point, okay? Best win of his career in uh, an in, in, uh, 18, no, 16-year career, okay? All right, so he beat a 24-3 and guy, okay? And this was June 1994, okay? So... You would think, wow, this guy in his tenth fight, he beat a guy who uh who had twenty seven fights. Uh, he might have been the underdog in that fight. He TKO'd this guy in the second round. Okay, wow, you know what a win. You know, I'm pretty sure there was a lot of hype and excitement behind that win. Okay, in his tenth fight. Okay, so what does what does he do next? Okay, now I don't know if it's him making his decision or his management or both. Okay, uh, but. In his 11th fight, he fights a guy named Joe Lipsy, okay? And this was, what, uh, five months after the Bowler fight, okay? In his 11th fight, he fights a guy named Joe Lipsy, okay? Joe Lipsy was 23-0, and okay? 23-0, and they fought at the MGM Grand, okay? Uh, and let's see. on In this fight, Derrick James lost by TKO. In the ninth round, a ten round fight, he lost in the ninth round against a guy who was twenty three and zero. Okay. All right. So, at this point, let me say, let me go back to uh, my notes here. Okay. I have a an asterisk. Okay, in my notes for Derrick James. Okay, James moved too fast. He lost his eleventh fight. Okay. Now. While he has criticized Kell Brook, you know, who he fought, why it took so long to get a title shot, etc., etc., okay? If Derrick James had been moved a little bit slower, you know, his career may have taken a different path, okay? Why put this guy in, in his 10th fight, they put him in with a guy who was 24-3, and three, who had 27 fights, okay? He won that fight by TKO in the second round, okay? That was a great win, you know. I'm he I'm pretty sure he was the underdog in that fight. Uh Derrick James, uh, you know, had talent, okay? That was that, that was something to open eyes and maybe get people excited about, okay? But why move this guy so fast, okay? This is why I defended what the Ingles did with Kell Brook, okay? They moved Kell Brook slowly, got him uh mature, got him experienced, seasoned him as a pro, and moved him at the correct pace instead of throwing him in early in his career in his 10th and 11th fight with guys who were 24 and 3 and 23 and 0, okay? Imagine young Kell Brook get gets stopped or loses one of those fights 
and his career could get derailed, okay? His confidence could be shot, all these types of things, okay? Derrick James, in my opinion, was moved way too fast, okay? They should not have put him in with these guys, 24-3, 23-0, oh, okay? Bad decisions, in my opinion, okay? This guy could have been developed further, got more wins, moved at a slower pace. He didn't have to move at a fast pace, man, you know? I don't know if it was him making that decision, his management, or both, okay? Uh, or his trainers, I don't know. But, uh, you know, they should have moved this guy at a slower pace, okay? And it would have been better off for Derrick James, okay? All right. So, after the Joe Lipsy loss, okay, he loses by TKO in the ninth round. First loss of his career, okay? And that was his... Uh, that was his 11th fight, so he would have been 10-1 uh, and 1 at that point, okay? So, in his 12th fight, he fights, he comes back, he fights a guy named Tyrone Jackson, who was 7-8, and eight, okay? He got a 10-round unanimous decision in that fight, okay? And, okay, so see, he went back, he took a step back in competition, okay? He went from 24-3 and 3 and 23-0 and 0 to a guy who was 7-8, and eight, okay? 7-8-1. and one. See, that was the level of, of opposition that he should have been fighting instead of these guys who had 20-plus wins early in his career, okay? All right. So he took a step back, got a win over a 7-8 guy. Then he fought a guy who was 9-12-1, okay? TKO'd him in the fourth round, okay? His next fight, he fought a guy who was 10-11-2, okay? 10-11-2, okay? I guess the guy could not continue uh, after the uh, fifth round, okay? Uh, okay, so, after his loss, he fought a guy who was 7 and 8, 9 and 12, and 10 and 11, okay, not world beaters, okay, but this guy's talking about the guys who, uh, who, who Kell Brook fought, okay, those guys had more losses than wins, okay, all right, now, let's get to a juicy one, okay, one that is very, very key, okay, in his 15th fight, okay, he fights for the vacant NABF middleweight title, okay? He fights a guy named Otis Grant. This is October 10th, 1995, okay? He fights a guy named Otis Grant, okay? I later on found out that Otis Grant, uh, and later on in his career, became uh, a, a WBO middleweight champion, and he fought uh, Roy Jones, okay, at one point in his career, okay, at uh, light heavyweight, okay, I think in 98, I believe, all right, so, he, he fights Otis Grant, okay, Otis Grant was 25 and 1, okay, uh, Derrick James, as I said, was a super middleweight, okay, this fight was for the vacant NABF middleweight title, Otis Grant weighed in at 160, Okay, Derrick James weighed in at 158. This was the lightest of Derrick James' career, okay? 158, okay? All right, now what happened in this fight? Okay, this is what's listed on BoxRec, okay? And when I saw this, I laughed out loud, okay? James penalized thrice and disqualified for repeated low blows, okay? Penalized three times and disqualified for repeated low blows, okay? When I saw that shit, I laughed out loud, okay? Uh, I thought, damn, this was an Andrew Galata situation. This guy got to a middleweight fight and had a meltdown, okay? He was dq in the 11th round, okay? This was a 12-round fight for, for a middleweight title, okay? NABF, but it was a middleweight title, okay? Uh, he was disqualified in the 11th round, okay? Now, when I saw this, oh boy, this was juicy to me. This was juicy. I thought to myself, man, man, I wish I could see this fight. Oh boy, I would, I would pay pay per view to see this fight, man. You know, I, I'm see, I was, I was like, man, I would pay sixty bucks to to see this fight. Okay. So what did I do? I typed in the names Derry James and Otis Grant in on YouTube, and guys. This shit is on YouTube. This fight is on YouTube. This this fight from 1995, which was broadcasted on USA's Tuesday Night Fights, okay? Uh, 
you know, with, without much fanfare, okay, I'm pretty sure this was not even the main event on that uh, card. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was not, okay? I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm sure it was not, okay? Michael Buffer was the ring announcer, okay? The copy of it that's on YouTube is done in French, okay? Uh, I have seen this fight, okay? That's what took me so long to, to get around to doing this in my previous video, okay? I want to get all the information before I comment on these things, okay? I watch this fight. I judge this fight, okay? I will discuss this fight in detail in my next video. But guys, I encourage you to pull up this fight and watch this fight, okay? This fight, uh, you have to see it for yourself to believe it, okay? Uh, I, I, I will not spoil it. Uh, you know, if, if you guys want to watch it for yourself and then watch my, my classic post fight, you can do that. But, uh, you know, and, and which I've already done. I did it immediately after I watched it, okay? So I was in the moment, okay? But you guys, if you guys want to pull up this fight for yourself, uh, just type in Otis Grant, Derek James, okay? Uh, I may try to put the link to it in the comment section for you to pull up, okay? Uh, but the fight, uh, the, the upload is about an hour long. I say it's about, about 50 minutes of the actual fight. You can, you can fast forward through commercials, okay? So it'll be a little bit less than 50 minutes, okay? Uh, but you have to, uh, see it for yourself. Uh, my impressions of Derrick James, Derrick James was a tall, uh, skinny, athletic, uh, guy. Uh, I could see where people thought he had potential, you know, uh, I do, you know, and if this guy, uh, you know, not to be critical of his management and trainers, et cetera, et cetera. But I think if this guy, you know, had been in the right situation, I think his career could have been better than what it was. Okay. I tried, in my opinion, if the Ingles had this guy, you know, if they if if they had done him like they did Carol Brook, had this guy fighting experienced guys, building him up slowly, not putting him in with guys who had, you know, 20 plus wins early in his career, I bet you this guy's career would have gone a lot better, man. Fighting experienced guys the way Carol Brook did, I tell you, I bet this guy's career would have would have ended better than it did, okay? That's my opinion. All right, so that was his first title opportunity. He loses that uh, uh, on uh, a DQ, okay? Now, what happens next, okay? Um, he fights a guy in his 16th fight. He fights a guy named Pedro Mon Montiel, okay? Uh... On March 31st, 1996, okay, this was at super middleweight, okay, after after losing the uh, NABF middleweight title fight, okay, by DQ, he is fighting, and this is his second championship fight now, he gets a shot at the WBC Continental America's super middleweight title, okay, now, let me say for the record while I'm talking about these, and so, some people might laugh at these, like I said, these are minor belts, these are what I call underling belts, Okay, but I tell you, man, if I was a fighter and I was getting these belts, shit, I'd, I'd be happy, man. I'd be, I'd be, hey, I'd be talking about them in retirement. I'd had them trophies in my, in my house. And I would say that I was the WBC Continental America Super Middleweight Champion. I would, I would brag about that shit. Okay, I would, I would, if I did not make it to the higher levels, I would say, hey, at least I accomplished this in my career. And that is pretty cool to have a belt. That That's my opinion. I would be proud of it. Them guys put in their hard work. I'll be proud of that belt, okay? So I I I don't know shit on these belts, okay? Hey, be be a proud of these accom these accom accomplishments if you are these guys, okay? Now, what happens against Pedro Mon Montiel, okay? According to Box Rick, Derrick James was KO'd, KO'd in the third round in a twelve round fight. He was KO'd in the third round, okay? Now. According to Box Rick, and this is bad, okay? Derrick James, this is bad, okay? With this, you have no no right to criticize anything about Kell Brooks' record or resume, okay? This guy, Pedro Montiel, according to Box Rick, at the time of this fight, was two and three. Two and three, okay? Derrick James, up to this point, let's see, he this was his 16th fight, he had lost twice, okay? So he was what 13 and 2 going into this fight, okay? 13 and 2, 
fighting a guy who, according to box rig, was two and three. Okay, this guy KO'd Derrick James, KO'd him, knocked him out. Okay, a two and three guy. Okay, in his 16th fight. You know, in my opinion, uh, let's see, let me, I, I have Pedro Mont Montiel's box rec, uh, pulled up, uh, well, it's not listed. I was going to look at his, his, um, uh, his height and size. He is listed on box rec as a middleweight. Okay. As a middleweight, I think for the, for the majority, yes, for, for the majority of his career, this guy fought at middleweight, okay? He fought Derrick James at uh, Super Middle, and then at the end of his career, he fought uh, a guy at, um, I, I, it probably was cruiserweight, okay? Because the guy weighed 200 pounds, and Montiel weighed 175 pounds, okay? So, other than that, than that fight, the Derrick James fight was uh, his only fight above uh, middleweight, okay? So, Derrick James, in these two title fights, okay, he had the uh the size advantage in those fights, okay? In those two title fights, okay, in the Otis Grand fight, he has a size and a reach advantage, okay? And the age advantage. You will see it when you watch that fight for yourself, okay? And you will hear about it in my in my uh classic post fight video, okay? And against uh Pedro Montiel, he was fighting a middleweight at super middleweight, okay? Two great opportunities for Derrick James to uh to uh get uh some sort of belt in his career, okay, and he failed both times, okay. Bottom line, he failed, okay. That's that's the way he was see it. That's the way he, he talks about Kell Brook, this hard line stance. You lost, you lost, all this kind of stuff, okay. Well, he had uh two title fights, he came up short in both, okay. Okay, now let me say this, okay, in Derrick James' defense, let me say this, alright. Uh, this guy, this Montiel guy, okay, I wanted to find a video of this fight, and I did not, okay, May, it might be some out there somewhere, I don't know, okay, uh, but, when I did my search, I found a, um, an article from brownsvilleherald.com, okay, deep in their archives, okay, <laughs> From Sunday, March 31st, 1996. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. This is a quote from Derrick James in this... Uh, in this article, okay, he was talking about the loss that I referred to uh, against Grant, okay, in the middleweight fight, okay. Afterward, I had to sit back and evaluate uh, the situation, James said. I only trained two weeks for that fight and didn't have much form. This one, I trained five to six weeks, so it should be a better outcome, okay. Well, it was not a better outcome. He got knocked out in the third round, okay, by a guy who was listed by box records two and three, okay. Uh, so he only trained two weeks for the uh for the oldest grand fight, okay? Wow. <sighs> okay, let me let me go back to that. I gotta see something, okay? He only trained two weeks for that fight. Okay. All right. I'm not gonna be too harsh on him. Why? Because. The fight he had before Otis Grant was on September 21st, 1995. The fight he had with Otis Grant was less than a month later. It was on October 10th, 1995, okay? So, I can see, okay, I can see why he said he only had, you know, two weeks to um, to train for that fight. This He must have been like a last-minute replacement type situation, okay? Uh, or he, he was made this, this offer and, you know, it was just too good to refuse. And considering the advantage that he had in that fight... I could see why, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> but I think it, it came to, to bite him in the ass, you know, um, later in that fight, okay, uh, because in my opinion, uh, he, he was getting tired in that fight, okay, so I think that, that, that bit him in the ass, okay, uh, but at the same time, I, I, I would not be critical because there was a good opportunity against uh, Otis Grant, okay, and you was hear my impressions of that fight, I, I do not want to ruin that video, or spoil this fight for you guys, okay? 
if you want to see it for yourself. All right. <clears throat> so uh, let me go back to this article, okay? The point that I want to make out of this article is this guy, Montiel, according to this article, okay, they said that Montiel was 8-3 with 6 KOs, okay? Not 2-3, and three, they say he was 8-3, okay? That this guy, Montiel, is from Mexico, okay? So I believe this is a situation to where Box Rec, uh, are not acknowledging or confirming those uh, six wins that they are counting on this guy's uh, resume in this uh, article by Brownsville Herald, okay? Uh, so uh, maybe Montiel said that, hey, I have, uh, I'm not two and three, I'm six, I'm uh, eight and three, okay? I have six more wins from Mexico, okay? And they probably counted those in this article. And hell, at the time of this fight, they probably counted them uh, in the, uh, you know, in this guy's record, okay? Uh, you know, having a two and three guy fighting for a WBC underling belt, you know, probably, you know, is not something that they would want to happen. OK, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, Box Freak has him listed as two and three. This article has him listed as eight and three. OK, with six KO. So, you know, in Derrick James defense, I will I will say that. But still, he had the size advantage. He had the he has he had more fight experience, even if this guy was eight and three. OK. Uh, and he was fighting a smaller guy, so, you know, this was a fight he was supposed to win, okay, um, you know, and, uh, he came up short, okay, so, Montiel was either 2-3 and three or 8-3, and three, depending on if you want to believe Box Rec and what they see as being official, or if you want to believe what I'm pretty sure Montiel said at the time, that he had more fights from Mexico, and somebody counted them and included them in this article, and probably included them in his official record when this fight was announced, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's go back to Derrick James's uh, box rig, okay? All right, so where does he go from that loss, okay? About five months later, in 96, he fights a guy named Daniel Holloway. Daniel Holloway's record was 0-3, okay? This was Derrick James's 17th uh, fight, okay? His, his, his 17th fight, he was fighting a guy who was 0-3, okay? TKO this guy in, in the sixth round, okay? 0-3 guy, okay? 17th fight, fighting 0-3 guy. He's talking shit about Kill Brooks' resume, okay? Then he fights a guy who was 5-7. and seven. He got a unanimous decision in the sixth round, okay? Then he loses to a guy who was 15-3-1. He lost unanimous eight-round decision, okay? What does he do after that fight, okay? He takes off, uh, hell, let's see. Uh, let's see, man. And yeah, he was out of the ring for well over two years at that point. Okay, that fight was in uh April of April of ninety eight. He did not get back in the ring until August of two thousand. Okay, he he makes his comeback against a guy named Jared Kemp, a guy who was one and four. Okay, in his twentieth fight, in his comeback fight, he fights a guy who was one and four. Okay, this is the guy talking shit about Kill Brooks' resume, who he fought. Okay. The guy, yes, the guy had been out of the ring for uh for uh two years, okay, over two years, okay. But he comes back and he fights a guy who was one and four, one and four in his twentieth fight, okay. He TKO this guy in the first round, okay. You know he talking shit, okay. And then <clears throat> he goes uh what two months later, not even two months later, uh a little bit less than that, he fights a guy named. Ole Clemistine, I guess. This guy was 42 and 5, okay? Hell, this, I don't know this for a fact, but now that I'm looking at this, maybe this was the reason uh, he made the comeback. Hell, they, they, this this uh, Clemistine guy from Denmark, uh, at least that, that's where they had to fight at, uh, maybe his management uh, reached out to uh, Derrick James and said, hey, we like to fight you, but uh, maybe you need to get a win first. Maybe not because Derrick James had been out of sport for, what, two years? Why, you know, find this guy and pick him? But, uh, okay, so he he goes to Denmark and he fights this guy, okay? 42-5 and five guy. He lost a split decision, an eight-round split decision he lost, okay? Now, maybe that was home cooking in Derrick James' defense. Who knows, okay? Uh, but he lost an eight-round split decision, okay? In Denmark to this guy, okay? All right. Then, after that, he got uh, TKO'd by a guy who was 10-0. Okay, a guy named James Lovwama, okay, TKO's Derrick James uh, in the eighth round, okay, a guy who was 10-0, this was Derrick James's uh, 22nd professional fight, okay. 
All right, and from there, what does he do? Okay, looks like he was out of the ring for, what, another two years. Uh, yes, that, that fight was in January of 2001. His next fight was not until April of 2003, okay? So another two-year break, okay? He comes back, he fights a guy who was 14 and 35 with eight draws, okay? Okay, 14, 35, and 8, okay? Again, he talking shit about Kill Bruce's resume. He fights a guy who 14 wins, 35 losses, okay? Gets a unanimous decision win in four rounds, okay? Okay, then he fights a 10 or one guy. That was a draw, okay? Six-round draw against that guy, okay? Who does he fight after that, okay? Let's see. What is this, another two-year break? Uh, yes, that fight was in, uh, June 2003, he did not fight again until August of 2005, okay, another two-year break, okay, so that was, what, three two-year breaks in this guy's career, okay, he comes back, he fights a guy named Jerry Stevens, Jerry Stevens' record, okay, was nine wins, 25 losses, and three draws, okay, nine, 25, and three, okay, Mr. Derrick James, who was adding up all these losses in Kale Brooks' career on his resume, the guys he fought, all this kind of stuff, talking about he ain't fought nobody, all this kind of bullshit, you know. In his uh 25th fight, his comeback on another two-year hiatus, he fights a guy named Jerry Stevens, 9-25-3. TKO's him in the uh, third round, a six-round fight, okay? You know, 9-25-3, but he talking shit, okay? All right. Then he fights a guy... Named James Johnson, who was 20, 22, and 2, okay? 20 wins, 22 losses, 2 draws, okay? Again, cannot be talking shit when he, when he was fighting guys like this with these types of records, okay? <laughs> you know? Hell, at least the guys Carol Brook fought had more experience, you know? You know, these guys, you know, more losses than wins, you know? So he wins that fight by a six-round unanimous decision, okay? <sighs> okay. Who does he fight next, okay? He fights a guy named Trenice Brown in his 27th fight, okay? Derrick James in his 27th fight. He fights a guy in his 27th fight who was 4-7, and seven, okay? The guy was 4-7, and seven, okay? You know, he TKOs this guy in the 4th round, in a 6th round fight, okay? Your 27th fight, Derrick James... You fight a guy who was four and seven, and you talking shit about Kell Brook. You know, come on, man. You know. All right, now, what next? Okay, he fights a guy. Hell, what? This was a month later. Um, uh, a month and a couple, and maybe like two weeks later. Okay, in his twenty eighth fight. Now, in his twenty eighth fight, Derek James. In your twenty eighth fight, he fought a guy named Tim Harris. Okay. Tim Harris' record going into this fight, guys. Derrick James, 28 fight now. He fights a guy named Tim Harris whose record was two wins, three losses, okay? The guy who had five fights in your 27th fight, your 28th fight. You fight a guy who had five fights in his career, okay? Oh, boy. Okay, and this guy is talking shit about Kel Brooks' resume. This guy? This guy, the, the the shit that I'm saying about Derrick James' resume, he's talking shit about Kell Brook, guys. You know, Kell Brook, who ultimately became a world champion, who was 32 and old when he fought for his world title, okay? Brought along at the right pace, got his title shot at 28, he had matured, he was a man. You know, everything that I said about Kell Brook's record, you know, and this guy is talking shit with, 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 the, with the, the guys he fought, these records, you know? Come on, man. And And... What happened in this fight, guys? Okay. This was the no contest of his career, okay? It was a four-round fight, okay? A four-round fight. Derrick James in his 28th fight, fighting a four-round fight against a guy who was two and three. A baby. He was fighting a baby, man. And not only a baby, but a baby with a losing record, okay? In a four-round fight, he fought a baby, okay? In a four-round fight, he fought a baby. And that was a no contest. Both boxers injured by an accident, an accidental head clash is what Box Rick says, okay? You know, bullying babies in, in, in boxing. That's 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 what he was doing, okay, at the end at, toward the end of his career. Okay. A four of seven guy, then a uh a uh, two and three guy. 
Okay, this was after he fought guys who was 20 and 22 and 9 and 25, okay? And went to a draw with a 10 and 0 guy and, a, and won a guy against a guy who was 14 and 35, okay? Fighting a baby in the sport, okay? In, in his 28th fight, in four round fight, okay? No contest. Congrats, Derry James, okay? All right. Now, this fight was the second to last fight uh, uh, in his career, okay? This was what uh almost four months, almost a full four months after uh the no contest, okay, and Derrick James' 29th fight, okay. He fought a guy named Chris Henry, okay. I don't know who Chris who Chris Henry was. Uh let, let me pull up his box rick. Uh since I, I am interested in seeing uh who, who he turned out to be, okay. What he was at the end, okay. Okay, while that is loading, let me talk about Chris Henry, okay? Going into this fight, okay? Derrick James was clearly the veteran, okay? Chris Henry was a guy who was 20 and 0. 20 and 0, okay? So this guy might have been, and this was at light heavyweight, okay? Chris Henry was 20 and 0. Maybe this guy, I'm guess, guessing, was a hot prospect at the time, okay? And Derrick James. Uh, fought him. This was his third title fight. It was for two title belts. It was for the NABF light heavyweight title and it was for the WBA NABA light heavyweight title. Okay. Again, minor belts, uh, underling belts, but at the same time, hey, if I, if I had got one of these in my career, if a Derrick James had one of these in, in his career, at least he could point to that and say, Hey, maybe I was not the world champion of a, you know, a, a major belt, but Hey, I got this belt. You know, I, I would point to that shit. Hell yeah, I would, okay? Now, but unfortunately, Mr. Derrick James, who talks all the shit about Carol Brook, about him not being great, you know, this guy is a world champion, and he's saying that he's not great, just good, you know? He's talking this kind of shit, and this guy, in, in his third title fight, he lost again, okay? He got TKO'd in the sixth round. In a 12-round fight, he got TKO'd in the sixth round by this Chris Henry guy, okay? Uh, for, for light heavyweight, for two light heavyweight belts, okay? So, that was four titles he, uh, he fought for, three title fights. He lost, he lost them all, guys. He lost them all, okay? So, you know, you know, I mean, hey, I, I you know, I, uh, hate to be harsh, you know, but if, if, if we want to go by, uh, Mr. Derrick James's logic and, and the way he, he sees the shit, hey, like he said, you know, bottom line, he lost, okay? So this guy in title fights, this guy was a failure. He was a bust. Bottom line, okay? That's that's just the bottom line, all right? <clears throat> now, let's see if that Chris Henry, um, okay. Yeah, here we go. Chris Henry. Okay, it was like Chris Henry, like he stopped fighting in 2012, okay? Chris Henry turned out to be a guy who was 26. He has 26 wins, 21 knockouts. He only had two losses, okay? Uh, you know, not bad, okay? This guy had had a good career, okay? He turned pro in 2005 and finished off in 2012, okay? Oh, this this guy is deceased, okay? He passed away. He uh yeah, he uh, passed away in 2015 in uh, August of 2015. So rest in peace to uh Chris Henry, okay? Not sure what, what happened to this guy. He was from Houston, okay? Uh, so he was a, another Texas guy like uh, Derrick James, okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, so the two losses of his career, he lost to Yusef Mack and some guy, Adrian Diac Diacono, Diac something like that. I don't know. Okay. Um, yep. Okay, so this guy had a, a decent career, okay? Better than Derrick James as hell. He he held some uh, some title belts, you know. Looks like he lost the um, the interim WBC uh, light heavyweight title to this Adrian guy. That was a fight after Derrick James. Okay, um, let's see. He won the NABF, uh, but he he already had that belt. Okay, but this guy had, he had at least he won those belts in his career. Okay, he did what Derrick James did not. Okay, and twenty six and two is a lot better than uh, twenty one seven. Okay, all right. Now, in his final fight, um, Derrick James, uh, I guess that was, what, almost um, 10 months later, 
In his last fight in 2008, he fought a guy named Martin Verdin, okay? And uh, this guy, in his last fight, he fought a guy who was 15 and 13 with one draw, okay? 15, 13, and 1, okay? And, like, like this guy was on a, what, he was on a, he was 1 and 6, no, 1 and 5, okay? In his last uh, six fights before he fought Derrick James, the guy uh, was 1 and 5, okay? He TKO'd this guy in the third round, the sixth round fight, okay? It ended his career, and then that was that was the end for Mr. Derrick James, okay? But that is Derrick James' resume, guys. Um, you know, and boy, this video is a lot longer. Uh, <laughs> it's the longest video I've done. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be this long. Uh, but that is going through this guy's uh, resume, okay? And at the end of it all, okay, you want to compare this to um, to Kell Brook, okay? I have a star 20th fight compared to Kale's resume, okay? So let me let's go to the 20th fight, okay? All right. He was fighting a guy who was 1 and 4 in the 20th fight, okay? All right, and Kale let's see. In his 20th fight, he was fighting a guy who was 15 and 1, okay? And from that point on, Kale Brook was fighting nothing but guys with um you know, with, with winning records, okay, more wins and losses, okay, um, so again, Kell Brook was moved at the correct pace, uh, all I can say, guys, if this is my opinion, I believe Derrick James' career would have turned out better, if, if the Eagles were, was, were guiding this guy's career like they did, uh, Kell Brooks, I think Derrick, Derrick James' career would have turned out better, I believe he would have won, uh, a, a belt of some sort, okay, I do believe, because I saw Derrick James fight, as I referenced the fight against Oda Grant, Derrick James had talent. He was he he was tall, athletic. He could move. Uh, you know the guy appeared to be in great shape. Um, you know the guy had potential. Okay, if he had been guided in the in the proper way, in the correct way, instead of being thrown in with guys who had you know twenty plus wins early in his career, maybe his career would have gone better, guys. You know, instead of losing some of these fights, which two of those fights, those two early championship fights, he had advantages in. He lost those fights, okay? But, uh, you know, that fight, the Otis Grant fight is controversial, you know, and you will hear my thoughts of that in that classic post fight. But, um, you know, Derrick James, man, um, you know, I, I don't see how this guy, this guy should should be praising what the Ingles did with Kell Brook. You know, brought him along at, at the correct pace. I think this guy's mentality, uh, maybe he was taught this way. Maybe he just believes this personally for himself. I think this guy believes that, you know, either you have it or you don't. You know, you fight, you know, you fight, uh, you know, good competition quickly, um, you know, and just push, push, push instead of slowly developing like they did with Kell Brook, okay? And it did not work out. It did not work out well for Derrick James. You know, it just did not, you know. You know, he was fighting those guys with those big, you know, 20-plus wins and, you know, hardly any losses at the, in the beginning of his career. And uh, while he knocked out the first guy he fought like that, the second guy he fought like that knocked him out, okay? And his career uh, did not go as it probably could have gone, okay? A, a loss early in his career, moving too fast, okay? While Kell Brook moved slowly. And uh, what what happened? The man became world champion, 32-0 and when he came to America to fight Sean Porter. He had more experience. He had more wins. Uh, more fights. He had fought guys who had more experience than the guys Sean Porter had fought, and the shit paid off, man. Came to America, I boxed Sean Porter, man. You know, so Derrick James should be paying attention, and he should be learning. You know, he should be learning. Ingles, they, they, they conducted a masterpiece with Carol Brook, okay, and uh, history could be repeating itself by uh, you know moving uh, Errol Spence kind of fast, okay. His 22nd pro fight, he's traveling to Sheffield. He's going to fight in a soccer stadium over there against the guy who I consider to be the best welter in the world. You know, the guy who, who has, you know, this is going to be what kills, what, uh, what, 38th fight, I believe. Uh, yeah, so, you know, could this be history repeating itself? You know, Texas guy moving too fast, you know. Derrick James was brought up that way. Now, Derrick James bringing somebody else up this way. They could move Errol Smith at a, at a slower pace. You know, but they're gonna move him at this uh at, at this fast pace, you know. Put put him in with this guy. You know, I know Errol Spence has skills, but uh 
hey, making this move of maybe if they had moved him slower, he probably could have got a title shot against somebody in the states, you know, as opposed to having to go to Sheffield, England, you know, and uh, fighting this guy in his hometown, in the soccer stadium, could be a mistake against a guy who has ten more years experience overall than Errol Spence. Okay, just remember that, guys. That that's my opinion. Uh, you know, I commend the English for what they did. Like I said, Derek James, if he had been been uh, managed better, I think he could have had a better career. And uh, but with the numbers that I just read off, the guys he fought, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, man, I I don't think this guy really has um, uh, you know, any room to to criticize Kell Brook, uh, for the guys that he fought and the, the path that his career took. Because what happened, the guy got seasoned, the guy matured as a man, he got lots of experience. And he became a world champion, unlike Derrick James. Thanks for watching.